Here we go. Yay! It's Here Thursday and I've got you home. I'm so happy. We'll, let her, we'll wait a couple of minutes and see how many people we can get on. A lot of our friends are not going to be on tonight. Yeah, we've got uh, a lot of friends, South Louisiana and South Texas, that, uh, you know, dealing with the hurricane right now. Miss Laura was a heifer to a lot of people. We have a friend named Laura. So. We have a couple of friends named Laura, but they know who I'm talking it's about. Coming. We're talking about the hurricane. Hurricane was a heifer. We didn't even get any rain. None yet. Like, it stopped short, like... 30 miles south of us. Like, yep. we got nothing. I was so disappointed. So, funny story about hurricanes. Yeah, what was it, four, three or four years ago, we had a Hurricane Harvey pass through. <laughs> got some good friends that live down, in, live down in Texas. Uh, their middle son literally calls me on the phone. He's like, hey, dude, you, you need to stop all this rain. It's, <laughs> it's just messing Jagger up the plans. Jagger is the best. I love him so much. So, yeah, we, we're... We're uh, praying, praying for, for everybody friends. down there right now, and hopefully they get everything back up and running real soon as far as electric and all. And uh, Joseph, can you take this camera just move it this way, just a tad this way? Nope. Uh oh. Hold on, you hit the wrong button. Here, wait. Just a second. Oh, not that far. We're okay. We're looking. There we go. That's better. Yeah, anyway. <sighs> Oh, no, it's no, it's crooked. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Y'all should be used to this by now with us doing all this mess. It's crazy. Yeah, we're stone sober. We are. <laughs> and drink it all. I haven't even put anything in my sweet tea. So I'm like, okay, it's all good. I'm just doing yeah. a little study in here. We've got our top fan giveaway tonight. We're going to talk about the northern swing a little bit more tonight. I know you're glad it's over with. I'm glad it's over with because you're close to home. Not glad it's over with because I, I I had a lot of opportunities that uh, didn't capitalize on. Nothing we can do about it now, but I had a lot of fun up there. Yeah, plan on making a trip to St. Clair sometime, hopefully before it ices over. But uh, schedule's kind of tight from here on out the rest of it's the year. Not, uh, that's an understatement. It is. He is busy and he's back to back and he's really bummed about whatever's going on with the Instagram people, so <coughs> forgive him for that but it's just been a little crazy so our moderator Pam is off tonight she's traveling south to go practice on Felsenthal because she's got a state tournament there when is that October uh, state in, in middle the end of October middle of the end of October ish just the last week of October, because it's after the Nationals Championship that Joseph and Jacob, J Squared, Team J Squared is going to. And they have their first season tournament this weekend on, where's your tournament at this weekend? Tin Killer. Tin Killer. He's eating dinner. I'm yeah. talking about you. Yeah. And then. He's eating with one ear pod in something. <laughs> We don't really know what's going on over there. We just know he's, he's still Is that what he's, you're he's doing? checking the audio. He's what lying. He's, welcome. he's so lying. Whatever. And so that's happening this weekend. You're their boat captain this weekend, so you're getting a little volunteer action in this weekend. So it's always nice. Yep. Oh yeah. And Kaney's not going to be here this weekend, and they're not going to be here this weekend. So that means I am going to clean my house. I'm so very excited. Done a good about job it. so far. I've, I've been purging like a mad woman. Like I'm done. Still, I'm just done. Still trying to figure out how we've got four four-legged animals and that creature in the house. Uh -huh. Joseph, you uh -huh. mean? <laughs> man, that's funny. That's he's joke. so yours, so whatever. You can talk about it all you want, but he's so yours. But anyway, it's fun time. It's good. Yep. But we're going to do that, and we're going to... Um, Talk about motor maintenance and some fun stuff around that. And because that Yamaha powers you through quite a bit of stuff hmm. the last few hmm. weeks that you've been fishing. So a little idea <laughs> of how big the waves were at St. Clair on day one. It's crazy. I know the area that I was it's fishing crazy. when the lake's calm, it's 10 feet. As the waves would pass under my X-21, 
the trolling motor would read sometimes 16 and 17 feet. That's, to me, that's a six foot tall wave. That's, that's big. <laughs> Jim wants your hat. <laughs> These are highly, I got you with highly, that, Jim. highly valuable, very hard to come by. I think I only have like three left now. Yes, Nathan, they are going to 10 killer this weekend. And I thought you were going with them this weekend. So you might need to text yep. this one over here to double check y'all's plans this weekend. So it's good stuff. But we're good there. And then, so we're gonna talk about motor maintenance and all the fun stuff there. And then we're also gonna talk about fish care because I had some questions for Harvey after I watched Critter One just passing. Bass Masters and all that fun stuff. And I've even watched some FLW stuff. Just to get some comparisons. I do all the work behind the scenes, so I'm having to do all my homework. So it's just homework, okay? Actually, we've got some. We've got some guys that uh, we got some good friends that, in the FLW that we know stuff. right now that are <laughs> fishing their championship. Greg Bohannon's doing pretty well. Dylan Hayes is doing well. You know, some guys that I know that are that are doing well up there. I didn't fare so good this trip, but That's okay. Uh, you got the you got five more seasons to go, and Kenny is messing up five more whatever tournaments. You got five more turns. You I might know. have five more seasons to go. I, I don't, don't know. know if I can handle five more seasons of you. Of what? I mean, of fishing. Did you say what I think you just said? Because you can go live in your boat. It's big enough that you can put a tent on the front deck, and you'd be set. you'd be set. I actually had to crawl in the rod locker again the other day. You get claustrophobic when you crawl into the rod locker. I didn't say I didn't get claustrophobic. <laughs> I said that I had to crawl Why did into you have it. To crawl I in didn't it? know you could just pull on it. I don't have the strength. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. I forgot. Life I goes on when we're yeah. doing live. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's the the you know we don't have the fancy equipment that some people have, but uh, we, we still work. manage. Make it work, sorry. But yeah. What? So we leave out on the 18th mm, of September. You're probably going to leave a little earlier because it's the open and it's Hartwell. 17th, so you, get, you can actually whatever. get some extra practice in while you're uh, heading out. Got to stop by and see my buddies over at Greenfish Tackle. I know we haven't, we haven't talked a lot about the, the stuff that Greenfish has this year. They're such good people. Though. But Well, we have a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, the Beer Belly Top Water is one of my favorites some of their spinning stuff spin whatever this spinner baits spinner baits yeah those things yeah just put in an order for some more of that stuff you know, today actually so GM's looking really forward to uh stopping by and talking to the guys at greenfish and uh, you know just He's visiting with them they're great them. people they've really taken care of me over the last two years katie got her hair cut by the way y'all yeah, come show them your haircut. Really? Look how cute she is. She matches your hat, kind of. <laughs> it only took 42 Smurfs to get that hair that good. <laughs> only 42. Surprisingly. Poor kid. But yet, yeah, what is this, your second week of school? Yep. Yeah. Our second full week at Arkansas Tech and has had to change her major twice because they messed it up twice. But that's okay. Yep. And speaking of ATU, our friend, um, basically our adopted nephew, Brennan Seymour, just made the ATU fishing team. So y'all need to root for him this upcoming season as well. I think they actually fish a tournament this weekend. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. So. I can't remember. I can't keep up with Joseph's schedule, your schedule, Pam's schedule, Kanye's schedule, and everybody else's fishing schedule. So kind of tough right now. Wait, what? You can't keep up with all that? It's on a calendar and huh. I just can't remember it all. So I just have to go continually go back to I can't remember my tomorrow. name from Tuesday to Friday. I go back to my Friday. planner to remember oh. anything. Oh, that's fancy. I know. Look at here. So my find of the week are these pens. Hey, that's my pen. If y'all are my age, y'all remember these. And these were like magic when we were in elementary school. And these are the best things since sliced bread. The best thing about these is it's not just your normal colors anymore. It's not just red, blue, black, and white, and green. This one actually has a pencil on it. Wow. I almost had a fit. Like, I love pens. I can't help it. And look at the pretty pastel colors. I'm so excited. 
Y'all, it don't take much. It just don't take much at all. But I love a good pen. They give a master's degree to anybody. No, they don't. <laughs> they give master's money. degree to people who pay them and make good grades. And I did well, so whatever. And it's paid off. I'm paying the bills. Miss Reba. Hey, Miss Reba. Hey, Miss Reba. Miss Deborah said that those Yamaha hats are very special. They are very special. They're highly prized. So. My, uh, my good buddy down in Express Boats had these made. Yes. Yamaha Thank provided you, the hat. Mr. Clay Connor down in Express Boats. Yes. I uh, want to do a little, little talking tonight. The new rods Ooh. should be heading this way in the mail. Yeah, I'm so excited. The so. new Cash and Icon should be shipped out and on its way to my possession. So maybe next week we'll do a Labor Day special and show them off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That'd be fun. I like it. Uh, good folks Alex over at Cash and Rods. You're going to be sending us, uh, I don't remember how many we ordered. I don't know either. You ordered a lot. 12, 14. I don't know. A, a lot. Trippy. But, uh, you know, that's that's something to look forward to. Hey, next week's episode. Yay. I'm excited about that. <clears throat> I can't wait to see him. No, I don't have the Roma. It's just the regular poison she gives me. Uh, Whatever. Makes sense. Don't be a loser. <laughs> Don't be a loser. It's not becoming of you. There's something else I was going to say before we get started. Oh, so there was a special shout out while Harvey was driving home or fishing or whatever. Anyway, it's Luke Duncan's podcast. Check him out. It's Low Budget Live. Low Budget Live. And it's actually... Uh, Dude can actually sing pretty good, too. I listened to some of his music when I was driving down the hot springs the other day. It's pretty cool. Oh, he's not too bad. Right. He's not too bad. Good. And he's apparently a pretty dang good fisherman. You could say that. Hopefully we'll find out soon. <laughs> but it was a really awesome shout-out from Paul Benson with the Cash and Fish and Rods family, speaking of Rod. Um, and they were, actually, they were actually talking about the new platform that's coming up next year that everybody's starting. So next year there's going to be FLW Bass, which you'll be still on. And then what was the other one called? The National Professional, Professional Fishing League, I believe is what it is. NPFL. I have not gotten it down yet, but it's really cool that they're expanding the sport the way it is. And the way that they talked about it, I thought was really interesting because it's like, we all want to grow the sport. We all want to grow the sport, but we don't want to grow it and lose our market share in that space, right? And this is a way to give other people a way well, it's, to it's fish going to, and build their professional. Portfolio. It's going to expand the the industry in the aspect. It gives more of your regular guys a chance. And, and I'm one of those regular guys. I just worked my butt off to get where Thanks, I'm at Chris. today. Hey, Kimmy. And, uh, you know, I think it's a great Josh. opportunity. I know some guys that are going over there. Uh, the other John Cox. Go John Cox. He, he will be there. He was and, the one that was in your juice yep. video, the juice drop yep. this week. Um, Check it out on uh, the... It's on the Cash and YouTube channel. And we YouTube shared the channel. link the other day it's on, on our your page. channel. Uh, John Cox has got it on his channel, but make sure you check out the juice. It's it's a great little, you know, just a few minutes of each, you know, each of us talking. Me and John actually discussed the different things we were doing with the same rod. Uh, mm -hmm. I was actually throwing a chatterbait on it that day. He likes to throw a jerkbait on it. For me, it's a little stiff for a jerkbait, but I know a lot of people that like a jerkbait rod that's got a lot of backbone to it. And uh, everybody's a little bit different. And... It, whatever works for you is what you should do. So uh, that's that's my take on it, and uh, you know that's just Thank the you. way I look at things. I do look at things a little bit different. Whoop whoop! It's not too bad, not too shabby. So that was cool. Um, I think I can't I can't think of any more news or crazy stuff that's going on other than hurricanes. So this year we've had coronavirus. We've had hurricanes, there's been more earthquakes, there's 
wildfires going on and all over the western United States right now. It's because I fell down in the shower that one time. That's <laughs> not an earthquake. I didn't. Oh my God, what on earth? Yeah, I up. get treated. No, it was an earthquake. No, I so just fell in the shower. Whatever. I mean, don't get it. You're nuts. But what? Everybody that's out there watching pretty much knows I'm crazy. Well, we know. Yes. Yes. Or that's why you got it. Like, crazy wife. You didn't marry me, so. It takes a little crazy to join my family. Just Not a little just bit. Just a little bit. No. That was, that was, <laughs> no. That was a lot of it crazy going I on have there. A severe mental lapse going on. Oh, I go crazy. You it's just have, been a nuts year. You do year. have good parts to your family, though. Yeah, I have some highlights. Like, four, I have some highlights. Four or five of all of them. I would like for you guys to pray for my two uncles. Um, my uncle Ricky actually just got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, so if y'all don't mind just lifting him up. Um, we know that that's going to be really, really tough um, to manage through. And um, my aunt Sandra, they've been married, oh gosh, forever. Like, 80,000 years or Forever. So. And then my Uncle David hasn't been feeling so hot lately either. So just lift them yeah. up for me. I'd be very appreciative of that. So lots of prayer lists going on right now. Definitely. <laughs> lots of prayer lists going on right now. So let's talk about, let's talk about motors first because, um, well, just because I've, I've got some questions like, one, I don't, how often do you actually have to like do the stuff? I'm assuming it's like a truck or a car, except you don't measure it in miles, you measure it in hours. Well, first of all, why do you measure it in hours? I mean, I, you can't, apparently because you don't have an odometer on there or anything, right? But whatever. I, I really don't have a great answer for that question. We would have <laughs> to probably get a hold of somebody that's been around the industry Thanks, longer man. than I have. Um, the only thing that I can say is as a motor runs, you have time. And that time equates into wear and tear. Yeah. And that's why on the Yamaha, we have a 20 hour maintenance after the break in period. You're going to tear the air. <laughs> you're going to tear into it? You're going to tear into it. <laughs> Actually, what you're, the only thing you've got to do is you're going to drain the oil, replace the oil in the oil filter, and check your lower unit oil. That's the simplest, easiest thing to do doesn't take very long of course it took me a while this time because I tried something and it didn't really work but I went about it the right way and it worked just fine we'll get into that <laughs> I don't know point. what that means but okay tips I for, didn't know about it tips for what though tips for uh, Lake Hartwell in August hmm I'll let you know about the Sunday after it's over <laughs> that is not funny <laughs> that is not funny I mean, I <laughs> got an idea of what I'm going to do because I'll be there uh, late August. No, late August, I'm going to venture to say that the fish will be started to move back shallow. Because you were in Harwell, what, early last year? Yeah, we were there in March. Late March. Yeah, we were there in late March. It was still uh, cool. It was, it was still pretty chilly. The fish had pulled up and started spawning. If I were going... I mean, I'll be there in September, uh, but in late August, I would start looking, you know, the mouth of the creeks in, in, in the lower end of the lake, uh, look for anywhere that you've got constant water flow. Uh, think uh, Beaver Creek or whatever it's called would probably be that area. You know, maybe not necessarily into the creek, but that general area where you're gonna have some current moving water find those shad the shad are going to tell you where the bass are pretty simple um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna be at gunnersville in a few weeks after we leave hartwell so it'll be be pretty much the same scenario i'm going to be looking more shallow than i am deep and uh, you know just go fish your strengths and you know throwing a crankbait's what you're happy with throw a crankbait if it's a spinner bait throw a spinner bait just do what uh what you have confidence in Rick Clow made a post, I think it was yesterday or today, I can't remember, and he actually alluded to the same thing. He's like, I've been up there and I have fished and fished and fished. And he's like, the one thing he saw John Cox fishing and witnessed what he was doing, and I mean, John Cox almost wiped the floor with everybody. I mean, it was still tight weights and stuff like that, but he was, Rick Clow's point was, is he went up there and he fished his strengths, 
and did what he was good at, regardless of the type of water he was in, and still, like, freaking took it to town. So, that was such a fun, it was well, a really fun tournament to watch. Well, Rick fished his strengths, and he was fishing the same areas as John was. Yeah. But John was up there with a spinning rod in his hand, which was yeah, the same. Yeah, that's what it was. Same thing I did. I read the post too. It was from Mr. Kwan. That was a very long post. But, uh, <laughs> that's a long post. There's there's a lot of wisdom to be said in that. You know, when when fishing your strengths is not working, do something you're not comfortable with. Yeah, uh, it's okay to go outside. The box. I, I myself still struggle with the Ned rig. I cannot make it work. I've tried it over and over. Uh, tried it at the last tournament and just could not figure out how to get them to bite. Uh, actually talked to a couple other anglers, hey, what, what am I doing wrong? And, and I got a few pointers, but by that time the tournament had started and I had to go with my, my gut feeling, go mm -hmm. do exactly what I'd planned on doing. Uh, day one, by the time I left the first spot I was on, I had 16 pounds in a live well. Called one twice after that, thing. bumped me up to 18 on day two. I, I just, I couldn't keep them hooked. Uh, call it waves, call it wind. I lost one in the river that I had my hands on that was over four pounds. Um, you know, once I went out to the main lake, I got one bite and that was it. But uh, that place is a phenomenal fishery if you get the chance. I know I say this all the time about those northern <laughs> fisheries. He gets God, excited. It, he gets so it, it's, excited. It's one of those places, if it's not on your bucket list, put it on there. And if you get the chance, for all, you know. Just do it. Just go. Just go. It, it's, it's Barbie worth, will take you if you want to go. Like, it's just worth a drive the up there just to He'll fish it, it one time. And, and How long was the drive? Like 13, 13 hours? 13 and a half hours. Yeah. So it's not that bad. That's doable. Yeah. All right. We got a question. We got a couple on Facebook, too. We need to get Thanks to High School National Open is on Heartfelt this week. I would probably have fun and good luck. Have a drop shot, mm, an underspin with a small swim bait, a top water, and uh, Miss G. Depending on weather conditions, it's probably going to be cloudy and rainy. Highly probable. Throw a spinner bait quite a bit. Uh, half ounce. Heck yeah, Michael. Something like that with a, with a paddle tail trailer, um, you know, like a finesse swimmer or something like that, or maybe even a suicide shad. But uh, suicide shad, I like that. Cover a lot of water. Those that's cool. that's my biggest deal right now. Is just you're fishing this time of year, just cover a lot of water. Oh, I miss you too, Miss G. Kenny's kindergarten teacher is watching this. Hello, Miss G. She's the best. Really? L yes. I know she's sitting there thinking the same thing we all are. I can't believe those babies have already gone yeah. to college. It's crazy. Um, before we get back to the motor maintenance piece, because I have some more questions about that, there was a question around, uh, it wasn't hummingbirds, but it was about fish finders. It says he's it's staticky when his big engine is running. Uh, it sounds like something in the ground. So the ground some of wire. The electrical? Uh, I would... Probably look at the ground wire, see if there's something going on there, a loose connection. That's generally anytime you see interference that I've I've found on my personal stuff, uh, you have some type of ground wire issue. Uh, and you know, if it's motor causing the interference, then it's definitely a possibility. I'm not a I'm not an expert on any of that by any means, but that would be my first first place I'm gonna go look is go look at the ground terminal on my battery and check all the connections in the wiring. Yeah. David Craven wants to know when he's winning that club boat. <laughs> uh, that will be October when yep. they do the drawing at State. So yep. there you go. <laughs> the Arkansas Bass Nation State Tournament gives away a boat every other year. This year they're giving it away and it'll be, the drawing will be held at the state tournament on Lake Felsenthal, October 18th, 19th, I think it is. That's my old stomping grounds right down there now. I won't chime in on it. I grew up fishing on Felsenthal. No, you didn't. I didn't fish it. I rode around with my granddaddy. <laughs> but we fished the looter and Washita, and we always went to Felsenthal because it wasn't that far from us. I'm not sure if that counts as fishing. Well, 
Whatever. I don't know if they let y'all cross that state line. Oh, yeah, they did. They let my uncle move across. So, uh, yes. They didn't know he was coming, though. <laughs> Whatever. 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 So, <clears throat> here's another good question. So, how often do you service bearings on your trailer with all the traveling you do? That's a great question. Uh, Jim says he hates Felsenthal, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's that... Bells and Thaws are a really great place to mess up your lower unit. That's for dang sure. Everything else. <laughs> so as far as, as trailer bearings, uh, usually uh, twice a year, I'll give them some love by keeping an eye on them. Simple way, simple way to do it when when you're walking to get your truck to go load your boat in the afternoons. Give that trailer a shake. You know, make sure everything's right and tight before you put the boat on. Before it? you put the boat on it, and if they're you know. Okay. Look at your wheels. Make sure there's no grass. There's no fishing line. There's no rope wrapped around the inside of those bearings. Yeah, you know, been this is uh, what six years now that I've been running express boats, and I've never had an issue. Something like that. Yeah, it's the sixth, I don't remember. sixth year. I've been running Express and yeah, never had a single issue with bearings knock on wood somewhere. No doubt. Uh, but yeah, they they use real high quality bearings down there, so I, I haven't had a problem. You know, nice. I don't, and that's that's part of it. I've actually you know pulled out of I, pull, I pulled out of the boat ramp uh, day two, day one at St. Clair, and there was just a wad of grass hanging on my axle. Well being vigilant in things like that i reached down and i grabbed that grass well that grass had a big wad of braid in it oh and, and that braided line gets in there it'll cut your seals you know within a few miles and, and those bearings are done but uh just be vigilant and keep an eye on all that stuff and that'll save you in the long run um the same thing happens to your props though too getting back to the motor that's right so yeah. when do you check your prop how often do you do it like how often do you have to take it off and like I usually Clean only up take your stuff, people. I only usually take off my prop about mm, every fourth or fifth mm. tournament. It's a good. Uh, but it, good, what I do is when I'm walking around the boat after I've got it loaded, just about every time I'm gonna spin that prop. And if I hear something, or if like, I see something in there, that immediately tells me, "Hey, pull it off and check it." You know, puts more grease on that thrust washer do what little needs to be done to it takes five minutes and you're done i keep a stash of cotter pins in my boat that way when i pull that prop off i can put a new cotter what pin are in. those it's just a little pin that goes through the like shaft holds them up kind of like the pins you have to put in your trailer when you hook the boat up kind of like those pins? sort of similar yeah okay i just need a reference but do those little things throughout the year and that will save you from having thousands of dollars catastrophic breakdowns later on because fishing lines the world's worst on bearings on your trailer on your prop those things are susceptible to getting fishing line around them and it'll cost you problems down the road so that's one of the main things to keep an eye on you know a lot of people fish around the boat ramps it's not a great idea but there's fish there generally and uh, you know, unfortunately, there are times when the, their fishing line gets lost there and it will wrap around your prop and it'll get behind it and it'll cause that, uh, the uh, rear seal to be cut. And once that seal gets cut, it allows water intrusion and will cost you a lot of money if you're not real careful. Will you have to replace the whole lower unit at that point? Or what does if it do? If you catch it fast enough, you shouldn't have to replace the lower unit. All you should have to replace is that rear seal. Right. No big deal. Uh, they'll fill but it back up. If you let up. it go long enough, it'll yeah, work. if you let it go long enough and it gets enough water in there, it causes rust. Rust is the worst thing you can have in a lower unit because the, all those gears mesh so tightly. Yeah, uh, it could cause the lower unit to be gone. Now, if quick. you if when you're changing the oil, how often do you change the oil again? In the motor itself, I change it at 20 hours, and then again at 100 hours. Okay, and then. What do you, what do you use, like, what kind of oil do you use? Do you use, like, regular oil like you do in a car, or? Yamaha actually has their own brand of oil that we use on all of our lower unit. We use it in the power head. <laughs> hey, Austin. 
At least you, Austin's watching us and the Republican National Convention at the same time. You're going to have a fun night. I bet you got a whole kind of crazy drinking game going on. Mm. <laughs> Mama Wicked's watching. Hey, Miss Amy. And I was not impressed with the sandwich picture that she posted today. That was nasty. Like, I don't even know, but I'm not going to go there. No. It was not good. They, somebody put raw bacon on her sandwich. Yeah, that's, It was not that's, good, y'all. It was not good. There's no way. There's no way. And that's no, bad. lower units are not cheap. Um, so they use, you got Yama Lube, and you use that for your oil. What else was there? Was there anything else you used? That's it. Whatever. They actually provide us with oil. But yeah, you get a whole kit, don't you? Yep. <coughs> But you can buy it at any one of our Yamaha dealers, uh, Bella Vista Marine here locally, Grove over in Oklahoma. They both have it, have it and carry it in stock. And it is the best thing for our motors, you know. Uh, let's see. Oh, David Graven said, also check your trolling motors. So you see that a lot too because yes. your trolling motor gets in those really low shallow shallow places. areas yeah. so i know you have to check that trouble i, I think actually you check it more than you do your I motor, motor do. don't I you check it more than i do the big <clears> motor. but it's it's one of those things where you know within a few minutes of running into some line i generally know on that trolling motor i'm just i know it sounds funny but i'm really in tune with the way my trolling motor sounds with the way my yamaha sounds when i'm running down the lake and any kind of little variance worries me and I usually take it over to the guys at the service trailers. Hey man, just give it a once over and, and you know, five, 10 minutes, we're down the road. So I think it's funny that you like, you can hear stuff because we just watched that movie the other night. What was it called? I can't remember the name of the movie, but I grew up with a bunch of grease monkeys, like my granddad, my uncles, everybody, like they could listen to an engine in any kind of car and tell you like that what the heck was going on with it and that's what you remind me of is that <laughs> what they say was wrong with you after they listened to you nothing because i'm awesome <laughs> and they love me because i was the first grandbaby i was the first niece so everybody not, loved me. i'm not buying it whatever not you even. can ask Uncle david i think you're lying whatever not even. whatever not even. Oh my gosh, David Bryce says any advice on landing a griddle? Okay, what the heck is a griddle? Okay. <laughs> I don't know what a griddle is. <laughs> Listen, if we're from you Louisiana, saw a so we call one of the Bella Vista lights. stuff all kinds of different things. Um, so I'm like, what is that? I don't know what that is. No, we wouldn't watch it sleep, Blake. No. Don't get him started, no, Michael Todd. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go <laughs> out on him here it. and say. That you were a little deep into the Bud Lights or whatever. Because <laughs> after 13 years of fishing up here, I've never caught one. What is and, it? I mean, I guess it's a fish. It's what we would call a shoe pick or grinnell back home. Whatever. Uh, I never caught one. Bow fin. There you go. Okay. Thank you, Chris. You could have seen a walleye. We have walleye in Loman. In Loman? Yep. Yeah. Why aren't have... you catching them so I can cook them? Well, it's kind of hard. You go catch them. Smarty uh, pants. But it's so much easier when you do it. Wow. <laughs> so okay. much easier when you do it. Who do you want to point out? My hair is really crazy. I got to do, every, I gotta do everything around here. Yeah, you do. There's your dead bread on a string. Whatever. Dead but uh, no, I've, oh, I've never heard so of better. nor seen a grinnell come out of any one of the Belvis selects. I'm not saying there's not one out there. Just chances are it was probably Brad. a walleye. Or some weird. Or some weird. Yeah. There's, some weird there's weird fish, fish everywhere though. I mean, Unless I somebody's like some throwing one shows. in there, which is, you know, we've got some odd cats running around here. I yeah. won't say no names, but he's probably watching right now. <laughs> and chances, hey, JT. Chances of him throwing one out there are pretty high, actually. <laughs> uh, I miss the Patterson family. Marie is on and watching us. And JT says, like, that's Miss Rhonda. Yes, it is. Miss Rhonda's tired. Uncle Brad Baber's watching. Yes. So moving on, what anyway. we got? Okay, so I feel good about motors and all that fun stuff. So yay. Um, let's talk about fish care. So 
Y'all help me out here. Because I saw some crazy stuff. I love seeing pictures of big fish, just like love everybody else does. Big pictures. Especially on Instagram. You know, you're scrolling through. Oh, yeah, there's a good one. True that, David. There's two things. And I'm trying to start now to educate the future. <laughs> you caught that fish in water. No, you did. Promise. You did catch it in water. <laughs> No, don't. don't don't drag the fish up on the bank and take a picture of it with leaves and grass all over. Hold it up. If you fish need to take like the it. selfie, I take selfies all the time. I know it's not the best thing, but I do it because I want to get those fish back in the water as fast as but possible. But what I notice is you don't bring it up and like hold it up this way. You bring it up straight and... It depends on the size of the fish. Yeah. Anything under four pounds... You know, you can't cradle a fish and take a selfie. With it. No. You just, that's not what you want to do. No. So I take the picture not as safe. fast as I can and get those fish back in the water. Just the boat. Folks, we fight a big enough fight with the non fishing community. Uh, if you do catch one and it's hooked bad, it's bleeding, wash the blood off of it before you take a picture. Please. It's a simple little thing that makes us all look better. Just, you know, dip it back in the water, pull it up, take a picture of it. I've seen, I've seen, I am seeing a lot of pictures where these fish look like they're dried out in it. It, it <laughs> hurts your heart. It does. And, and nice. don't get me wrong. If you're going to keep that fish, by all means, keep it, take okay. it home, knock the sides eat off it. of it, eat it. I'm fine with Compost that. Compost the leftovers. I am totally 100% okay with people taking fish home to eat. What I'm not okay with is those fish going back in the water and in an hour they're up on their side and they're dying. That's, That's one thing. Like Harvey will stay in one spot and make sure that that fish goes down. And I mean, we, um, I was going over GoPro footage this afternoon. And I mean, you fizz like almost every one of your fish. I did it's fizz. Like, every one of my fish so like if you don't know how to fizz learn how to fizz there's tons of videos harvey's got one out there there's tons of videos did i do one of them i don't i thought you did i, I don't keep, I keep up no did. more <laughs> you do it was on much, facebook for yes. sure but anyway learn how to do that especially if you're going up north and doing it i don't think you have to fizz mm -hmm. as much down here or do depends you? on time of year or it depends on how deep you catch those fish right no no. That's that's another big misconception. Last year at Lake Ten Killer on day here. one, please. I caught a fish out of two feet. No, day two, I caught a fish out of two feet of water. Two feet. This bass would have had to have swam over a quarter of a mile to get to ten feet of water. Dropped Ooh. it in the live well. It was a legal keeper. Uh, went back to fishing five minutes later. I'm like, you know what? Something just Start, struck me as odd about that fish wasn't even a big fish it was just a two and a half pounder went back and looked at fishes up on its side and yet i could tell that it needed to be fizzed we're a little bit out of focus at the uh oh so, yeah. we moved too fast for instagram but uh Ooh. i fizzed that fish i weighed in that fish i caught that fish at 10 15 minutes after seven in the morning i weighed that fish in after 3 p.m after I weighed that fish, I went straight to Gene Gilliland. I'm like, Mr. Gene, why would I have to fizz a fish that I caught out of two foot of water? His explanation, they don't necessarily have to come from deep water to suffer barotrauma. They can be caught shallow. They still get affected. They will swell up. They will float. So don't ever think that just because I caught a fish out of five foot of water, it won't suffer from barotrauma. Keep an eye on your fish when they're in the live well. You know, if you drop one in, go back, hey, fish Jim. for a minute or two, and then go back there and open that lid and check it. It doesn't take but a second. In that few seconds that it takes you to check on that fish, if he's straight up and down, he's probably going to be fine the rest of the day. But if he's up on his side or he's laboring Fix trying it. to stay down, Fix it. pull that fish out, fizz it, drop it back in the live well, weigh it in in the afternoon. You're better off. It'll it'll save you money in the long run. Trust me on that. Somebody asked a question a minute ago about 
do you put any treatment in your live well to help your fish? I do at times. When I feel like I'm fishing water that's hot, I will put uh, G juice in there, uh, the PH Marine product G juice. I really like using it because it seems to keep the fish calm instead of some of the other products Is out there. Is there a sedative in here? I need to probably give it to the kids. <laughs> Be a bad idea. Just say it. That is the maybe only I, time that uh, I see it. I'll use a, a, a nip. We'll get to it in a second. A treatment, so to speak. The rest of the time, I also don't use ice. I come from yeah. Louisiana where we fish 95 degree water all the time. Don't use ice unless I'm going out late in the afternoon and I'm going to keep fish. I'll put some ice in just to cool the live wells down before you get the Before fish I ever in. put a fish in there. I know a lot of guys when we were, I can't remember where we were at, but a lot of guys were putting ice tons, in there. Tons, tons of ice. Tons of ice in there. So if the water is above 80 degrees, now this is my personal opinion, it's not scientifically proven. If the water is above 80 degrees, I will use a bag of ice, throw it in the live well as soon as I get to the lake, dump it out in there, fill my live wells up before I ever even start fishing. And then as I put a fish in there, I don't ever worry about putting any more because I am all the time putting fresh water into that live well. That's right, because you have a you, yours runs right. Do you run it all the time? All day long. That's so you're why constantly pumping fresh water in and out of that. It, live it's on well a timer. Day. It'll run for about thirty seconds, shut off for two minutes, run for about thirty seconds, and shut off. Now, if you don't have one of those, most do now, though, right? They, they most fast have, have that, right? Have to. Yeah. What else would you use in there if you didn't have that? Mm, the, the, you've got to have some type of way to pump water into the live well. Some guys will shut it off and recirculate. I don't like that because any fish waste, anything that they regurgitate in the live well stays contained with them. Where if I'm always pumping new water in there, I can keep the, the amounts of waste and the amounts of any type of regurgitation to a minimum, mm. that, you know, it's, I've proven it for years. I've lost one fish in the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. Why I lost that fish, I couldn't tell you. It puked up something on the way. It was already sick. You know, <laughs> as I'm reeling it in, it pukes up something that I've never seen. So I'm pretty sure that that fish was sick already. When I put it in the live well, it was fine. A couple, two hours later, I noticed it start floating. No joke, I literally hung the fish over the side of the boat and idled for a half mile trying to revive it. Wasn't nothing I can do. I did everything in my You're power so sweet. To, to keep that fish alive and it just didn't work. I knew. I didn't You're know going to sweet. lose a small number of fish throughout your fishing career you that there's nothing you can do about. That's the thing. The point is to lose the smallest number of fish in your fishing career, <laughs> honestly. So what is that thing called that recirculates? Is it a recirculator? Yep. And then I also heard you say the term oxygenator. What's the difference between the two? So an oxygenator is an actual device that produces oxygen in the live well. So you have that in addition to the recirculator. The recirculate pumps only pump water through the system. I aerate my system because I pump fresh water into the live well at all times. Okay. The only time I use the recirc, I fill my live wells completely full, plug both the holes, I'll turn the recirc on if I'm making an extremely long run. Okay. And what I call an extremely long run is 20, 20 to 25 miles or more. Okay. Then as soon as I get there, I actually pump most of the water out and fill it up with fresh water. David Gray has got a good point. So he freezes water bottles because he doesn't trust the water quality of commercial ice. I have, That's an interesting thing. I have seen an instance where there was a tournament on Table Rock a few, five or six years ago, where everybody no, that stopped Randy. at the same store that bought ice, they lost all their fish. No joke. And that I'm was fishing. the only differential between the fish that I weighed in and the other guys. They bought ice from this one place. All their fish were lost. My fish survived. I don't even remember. I think we finished in the money in that tournament. I, I don't remember now, but it's been been quite a few years ago. 
That's crazy. That's really crazy. But every single, and, and, and I like to know, you know, what was the cause of, you know, dude, you don't lose fish. What happened? Well, I don't know. I bought ice over here. I asked the next Bring guy. Bring it on, Miss Deborah. Met. And they were gonna uh, hook you up. That was we love it. That was the uh, the only common denominator in the whole situation was everybody bought their ice from the same place. That's crazy. Now, commercial ice is generally pretty clean. Uh, we use it in our tanks. Mr. Gene Gilliland uses it the commercial ice we in our drink tanks. It. I'm like, I'm put, we put it yeah. in our cups and stuff. I'm like, that's a little scary. But, like, you know. I'm making, I'm going to take an ice maker next time. We're getting an ice maker for a camper. Miss Deborah, I have used that in the past. Um, <sighs> and it does work. I've got a set out there in my garage. And if the customer that wants it with the boat, I'll actually install it for him when he buys it. But, uh. A VT2 live well ventilation system. Yep, I had it on my previous boat prior to owning the Express, and it worked great. Yeah, good stuff. What that what that ventilation system does is allow any of the gases and all the heat that builds up to escape through the vents. Yeah. Let me ask you a quick question. So we talked about the live well stuff, kind of keeping them alive while you're out there fishing and this that, and the other. What about landing that fish? So here's the thing. I've been watching footage today, right? And free, Terry says, freeze two liter bottles of water. Yep, you're right, son. Um, that's the way we used to do it when we were poor. We still are poor, so we we'll probably need to yeah. do it again. But um, I've been watching your video footage, and you don't have, like, a super heavy hook set. Like, you, well, there are some, but you look pretty gentle on the videos today. Those, the, the footage that she's referring to was at Champlain when I'm throwing a chatterbait. The rod that I was actually using on Champlain throwing the chatterbait was our rattle trap rod. It's a seven foot five inch rod. It's got a lot, it's really parabolic. So when it looks like I'm just kind of gently setting the hook, Instagram. It's well, a little bit more violent than what it looks like. <laughs> but the other is? footage she's talking about <laughs> is actually from when I'm drop shotting on St. Clair. So oh. there's a big difference between the hook set that I'm using when I'm flipping in three foot of water compared to a chatterbait or a drop shot. Now, it's still not a Brad Hallwell hook set <laughs> where the boat actually transposes positions and moves through space and time. And when, knocks when people he sets out. The hook, you know, <laughs> a lot of the times, if it's less than a three pound fish, it goes flying through the air. <laughs> it's, uh, there's, there's been saltwater guys that tell this guy that he's got like the wild. He wildest. needs a fish, saltwater fish, and not. And not I, I don't I mean if he's I trying love, to catch I love a my boy. two thousand pound shark. Yeah, but <laughs> he's, he's good at punching. These are bad. He's Sweet. good at punching. Come on, he does. Fish. He is a puncher. He's, pun he's a puncher. Um, but like hook set is another thing though that I think impacts the health of the fish. Mm -hmm. and you have to kind of be careful with that, and then getting it into the boat is the other thing that I think impacts the health of the fish. So talk to me about that because I'll see you boat flip some. But then I also see you sit down and very carefully bring them in the boat too. There so. again, you're, you're talking about two different situations. Uh, if I'm throwing a chatterbait and it's less than three or four pounds, I'm going to boat flip. I don't like to let the fish hit my sea deck. Skylar's on. What's up, boo boo? It's, it's just one of those things that I personally just don't like to see fish flopping in the boat. No. Yes, I have done it. We've all done it. I don't like it. So if I'm going to boat flip that fish. Be very small. Generally, I'm going to try to grab the line, not let the fish land in the bottom of the boat. When I'm drop shotting, if it's a keeper fish, I hand grab it. All of them, large mouth, small mouth. I did boat flip a few large mouth at St. Clair. Ain't gonna lie, it happened. Uh, it's okay. One of them went to the way in with me on day two, unfortunately. But. Uh, it was uh, just one of those instances where I knew how the fish was hooked. I knew that it wasn't probably going to help me out through the end of the day, so I both flipped. I'm using 10 pound sunline braid. You seven knew pound, for sure it wasn't going to come yeah, off and get Seven pound sunline leader. Right. And 
realistically, I probably could boat flip uh, some of the fish that are bigger than what I actually reached down and grabbed by hand, but why take that chance? You know, I'm trying to win $100,000. If I lose one of those fish, it's going to cost me money. Yeah. So I'm going to try my best to put my hands on them. And from what I've learned over the years, I've lost very few fish. Now, in saying that, yeah, I did lose some at St. Clair that cost me, but all of those fish that I lost except for one, I lost them way out yonder. I didn't lose them beside the boat. I lost one beside the boat. Um, you know, they're going to come off way out there before I get them to the boat. It's just one of those things that uh, I, I've practiced a lot over the last couple of years. You know, when I first started fishing, getting ready for the opens, uh, what, four years ago. Yeah. Wow. I took the net out of the boat and that was what I practiced. I practiced putting those fish in the boat by hand <laughs> just where I could get better at it. <laughs> Watch your boat flipping is all we're saying. We're not saying you can't boat flip. You Just can. Just make you sure you're to. careful. Those are your fish That's at all. Point. Just be careful. That's all. Uh, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a daily limit of two fish you can catch at Hartwell. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's so funny. So funny. Anyway, so there's that. What about, like, culling and all of that jazz? And we only have a few minutes left, but what about culling? Because I know... You actually caught a fish the other day that had a stringer in it. One with the little pokey thing that we used to use when we were kids. But that that was a walleye. And it was one of the strangest fish catches I've made in my life. <laughs> get bit, set the hook. I'm reeling this fish in and I see something green. At least it didn't get like bit in half. This color green in the fish's face. And I'm like, what in the world is that? I, I couldn't tell if it was a bait or what. So... Pulled the fish over the side of the boat, and sure enough, Thank one of the cheese. like six foot long green nylon stringers is poked through this fish's jaw. Crazy. And attached, and I'm like, well, I guess somebody lost their fish and their stringer. Was the fish still alive? Yeah, he was fine. Really? He bit the bait that I was throwing. Huh. We'll post a picture later. So I literally cut Nuts. the stringer off. I released the walleye to live out his walleye. life. He would have been tasty. The wildest story, though, that I had from St. Clair was day two. Get bit, set the hook, and I immediately know that I have something huge. Huge. Hey. <laughs> Reel this fish up, and it's about a 50-inch muskie mm. that's eight about a 12-inch walleye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you caught the walleye first, didn't you? I don't know. <laughs> because when I got bit, I set the hook and it was a giant. I don't know if they attacked giant. the bait, and you know if the walleye attacked the bait and the and the musky, musky attacked the walleye at the same time. All I know is I felt one bite. I set the hook and I have this giant fish on. I reel it up to the top. I see what it is. So I immediately pull my phone out and start recording. Never get the musky on, but I literally, you can hear the drag screaming. And once I get the walleye in, you can see the damage. Uh, don't know if that poor little walleye made it or not, but we're hopeful. Probably not. <laughs> that he was able to live out his life in fishy land up there on the St. Clair River. But uh, It's crazy. It, yeah. was, uh, it was a fun experience, and, and I love going up there. It's going to be really fun when i get to go back because i know a little bit more about it now yeah it was cool you know i didn't have a musky attack any of my small mouth but john cruz has got a great video out he there does. it was hilarious of what happened to one of his and this is about a three pound small mouth and it literally just gets demolished. it's annihilated yeah it was like it was like a shark bleach. You, know, you yeah, think of like those shark was, shows? Yeah. It was That's what that poor fish looked like it had. It was just like a mini yeah. shark ate that poor fish. It was, was a bad deal. Insane. It was insane. We, we, we know the age and the history of the fish up there. We really try to take care of those smallmouth as best we can. You know, one of those four pound smallmouth is a fish that's over 20 years old. And on the St. Lawrence, some of those four and a half to five pound to six pound fish, they're 30 years old. It's kind so of crazy. So we do our very best to take care of them while we're up there. Right. And I can see, you know, I saw personally some of those big, huge smallmouth 
that had been caught before and released. So I know that they're getting to live a long life, even though we're catching them, we're weighing them in and bringing them and letting them go. Isn't it crunch? Awesome sauce. So Lake St. Clair Colin, is where I was at. Calling system. What do you use? Uh, the, 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 is it a clip or is it? It's the clip it's the on the clip, we, right? We, can't we don't use, use the others, do you? We can't use the puncturing coil tags anymore. What's the one thing you would tell kids like Joseph to avoid doing when they are prepping their fish, like doing selfies and things like that? Keep them in the water as much as possible. You know, whether you have to holler at a buddy to come over there, whatever, don't leave that fish laying on the ground. Hold it in the water. Now, don't get me wrong, I know some folks live in Florida where there's alligators and that's not a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> but if there's something going to eat you in the water it's okay for you to maybe avoid that keep that fish <laughs> wet keep his gills in the water yeah. that's going to increase the chances of him staying alive after he's released after your pictures um, we saw one kid hold it by the gills like mm -hmm. quick to correct that don't hold it by the gills yeah I don't, don't put your my hand up that's just poor fish i don't make comments on those pictures that i see like that because all it's going to do is shine a bad light on that young man or young person but if we can start educating our kids now to take yes. better pictures take care of these fish more uh their their, their yeah, chances of us seeing a lot better pictures from here on out seeing those fish grow to bigger sizes or they have a better chance like we're fishing for the future, so we got to take care of our fishies. Yeah, I'm gonna go back. So gotta, Who's that? Which one here? Yeah, uh, Randy Krause. I'm guessing the angler would be allowed to turn a dead one back in case a muskie attacks it. I don't know. That is false. <laughs> really? If we put that fish in our live well and it dies, it is ours to keep. We cannot throw it back. So now, uh, if that muskie attacks the fish and it is still alive, we can release it. Mm -hmm. Chances are it's not going to live long because that muskie's going to be there to finish the job. He's like, I'm yeah. hungry. But if we release that fish while it is still alive, it is totally legal for us to do. But if it goes in the live well and it dies, it's on us. It is ours to keep at that point. Oh, my goodness. That's right, Jerry. Fish lives do matter. Every one of them. Yep. All right. So before we cut off, we've got our top fan awards for August. We're very excited. Yay! Um, oh, and before we do that, next week, the Gazette's going to publish the next installment of H3 Chronicles. So make sure you go out there and check out the Formable Gazette online. It'll have it online. Go check it out. It'll be and read it and read all of his past ones too while you're at it and let us know how, what you think about it. So Chad Hornsby, who's actually a military guy. So thank you for your service, Chad. Definitely. We're going to send you a note to get your e uh, e um, address. And then I forget... Uh, I can't read his name. I think it's James Rogers. I think I wrote it down that way. I can't see. I'm tired. My eyes hurt. So James and Chad, you guys are going to be getting some goodies from us. So expect that coming through. And make sure you keep and maintain <coughs> your top fan status because we're going to be doing it again next month. I'm very excited to see who that's going to be. And then we'll get ready to go and do fun stuff. So our favorite fish to eat around here is either walleye or crab. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and we mm -hmm. do eat fish, just not very often. Because mm -mm. I don't get that much walleye. <laughs> so good. Uh, Miss Penny wants to still discuss, discuss uh, your boat with you. I think you've Excuse got my phone boat. number. If not, message me. Come on, Penny. I'll get Call it to us. you. Come over or we'll come over. Or or I'll whatever. meet y'all at the dealership and we can go over all the options and designs and whatever else we you We have need a book know. too, so. Yes. We'll just go to lunch and show you, and we can do it from there, and you can learn all about kinds of fun stuff. It's better when you're there to see it, though. Yeah. And, like, First experience thing. it. I love I love our boat. I love our boat. It's so nice. Chad and James, congrats. Yes. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm excited. I'm not sure what I'm going to send them yet, but maybe. I'm sure we'll find something later. Maybe one of these cool express cups. I'm not sure. Maybe a hat. Not lemon cream cookies. I don't know, though. You might mm -hmm. get them. Fancy. So we actually, a little story before we leave, I actually found this in the laundry basket. Our dog yeah. Yeah. hoards stuff. 
Like I found this in the laundry basket and everybody has that one sock basket, right? You have that sock basket that has all the leftover socks from the washing machine or whatever, but you don't match up, but eight. you just have a really hard time letting go of because you know that matches okay, somewhere in the house. Well, I found cheese crackers in it. And ugh, our little dog loves the horse The struggle stuff. is real around here, folks. I don't know. So if y'all got anything to help me keep dogs from doing this, please let me know. I appreciate you. Everybody have a good Love night. Love you guys. Peace out. We'll talk to you soon.